welcome. If you're uh, just starting to uh, jump into the uh, live feed this morning, it's uh, good to have you here. Um, as always, we have to give a few minutes to allow people to sort of uh, get online and connect to this experience this morning. And uh, as always, I'm deeply grateful for anyone who decides to kind of join in and be with us this morning. So um, I'm glad that you're, you know, finding your way to us uh, today. And particularly today is a Palm Sunday, uh, a day that we um, remember that um, at the end of all of his public ministry, uh, Jesus begins to uh, move the, um, the heart of his movement uh, with folks into the city of Jerusalem, right uh, near the time of Passover, where people are celebrating um, this great annual celebration of liberation. And uh, that's where we're at today. The energy of the palm branches and the candle uh, today are just a signif signifier of that kind of event today that we uh, mark. So it's Palm Sunday, and we're glad that you're here to um, uh, collectively uh, spend a few moments again uh, centering ourselves and being connected to um, the ground of our being, the sense of uh, connectedness to the earth, and particularly today. Uh, my hope is to kind of lead us in an experience uh, that guides us into a connection with our own body and maybe awakens us to the wider collective body, because I think that's an important part of um, kind of the wisdom we need to carry forward as we experience this a global pandemic together and knit it somehow into the um, wisdom of our own faith traditions. So that's what we're going to do a little bit, uh, work on a little bit today. Uh, before we get started, um, just a couple of comments. I think, I don't know how you're doing. <laughs> I don't feel you're doing okay. Um, but we're all absorbing the news, the most recent news now that the extension of um, shelter in place now is going to go through the whole month. Um, the effect of that on our kids and their um, capacity now to be um, kind of engaged in the classroom through distance learning, uh, that's a new experience for them now, maybe through the end of the school year. Uh, for teachers trying to struggle with uh, how to teach kids and engage our kids in such an environment, uh, the ongoing loss of jobs, uh, moving on now to a point in time where we're over a million cases of the coronavirus, uh, 60,000 deaths because of it uh, across the globe. I mean, my sense is that we're feeling in our bodies uh, more and more the, the weight of this. And I know this past week for me in particular, um, I've had the experience of kind of recognizing, and maybe you have too, for the first time, sort of how this is manifesting inside of my own flesh and bones, right? The low-grade anxiety, um, a sense of being more tired all the time, uh, managing some waves of depression that come with that. Uh, I can feel in my body the weight of this global situation that has filled so many lives uh, with dis-ease. And I can only imagine that you, whether you're recognizing it or not, um, whether you're experiencing somewhat the same thing. So today I want to focus in on that theme of how do we um, allow this experience to awaken us to the way in which our bodies can be engaged in this? And, and why, do I, why do I do that today? Why is that the focus for today? In Christianity, if you're a part of a Christian faith community, and many of you are a part of our saviors, but uh, many don't have a connection to a Christian faith community, or even if you're in a different faith community, there's many faith uh, traditions that remind us how powerful the body is. I think about the presentation we had here recently. Uh, we brought in a Hindu person to talk about the power of yoga and how in the Hindu tradition, the linking of your spiritual path to the, your physical self is so critical. Um, and to think about how you embody spirituality is a big part of the Hindu tradition. And so in, in addition in Christianity, right, we, every week we hand out the body of Christ. We imagine ourselves as being one body, that we in fact are that body of Christ. There, there is a lot of language around embodiment. And sometimes I think we think of that language as an abstraction that, oh, yeah, 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 we all are the body of Christ, or um, as, 
as Paul would say, you know, we're all one in body. You know, nothing's less important than the other, the head, the, the torso, the feet, the legs. It's all one big body. And I would argue that what we're discovering in this pandemic is there is a need to awaken as well to this great collective body. And so today I want you to try to get in touch with your own body, you know, what's going on for you, and to soften your way into an experience of um, maybe the wider collective body, the, the global body that we're all a part of. Okay, so that's the journey we're going to be on uh, today together for the next 30 minutes. Uh, hopefully um, you can enjoy the ride and find something meaningful along the way. And um, before we start, we're at a grounding piece where I'll ring the bell and invite us to kind of get situated today. Um, I just also wanted to touch base on why I think um, these little moments that we've been forced into having together because we can't come together physically um, in some ways have pushed me to think about how I think we need to, in some ways, push beyond thinking of ourselves as being assigned to a particular religious paradigm and continue to explore, given the evolution of our times, to explore what it means to engage in kind of religious experiences. How, how do we foster together capacity to have religious experiences collectively that can even um, go beyond your particular religious perspective? And so these times are, for me anyway, a time to kind of play around with that and, and say, you know, how can we connect together in a way that makes me feel like I'm having some kind of religious experience that for today anyway, uh, grounds me into my own body and awakens me to the collective body. Okay. So with that, let's get started for this morning. I'm going to invite you today to, um, whether you want to sit or stand, I'll be standing, but you can sit if you like, um, and to kind of just pause for a minute and, um, take a couple of just cleansing breaths to feel feel your own body today. And I'm going to ring the bell three times today. And in the first ringing, I just want you to kind of notice, to be attentive to what's going on in your own body. Um, are you tossing and turning in bed all night and fostering some sort of low grade anxiety? Do you feel sort of low grade nervousness, uh, tingling, you know, try to, try to be in touch with, uh, your own gut and your own sense of how you are embodying the experience that we're all sharing now. So that'll be the first bell, just to be attentive to your own persona, all right? After that tone ends, the second bell, um, I want you to um, kind of feel the embrace of the 71 people now who are collectively together in this moment and to feel yourself embracing them and know that even despite our disconnection, we are deeply connected and almost to feel the embrace of all those people who are here with us today and just feel the warmth of that in the second ring. And finally, in the third chime, uh, both to be in touch with body, to be in touch with the collective embrace of the body, the last ring, I would just um, have you pause in gratitude and just be grateful for all that you're being invited to experience during these times and this experience we're having this morning. Okay, so with that, um, uh, a ringing of the bell, um, feel your body, feel the embrace, and then a moment of gratitude. Here we go.
So welcome. Um, I'm glad you are here. And hopefully now you're here in a more physical way, right? You allowed yourself to feel body, to feel the embrace of the collective body. And of course, to be deeply grateful for this time together. And I must say, it is a time for me as well to simply pause and be present with you. Um, that means a lot to me too. Um, you know, I, I'm isolated as well. Right? So having these ways of connecting are important. Today we're focusing in on the story of, um, the Christian story anyway, of Jesus, uh, who now has been connected to so many different lives that are experiencing in his context what we might think of as dis-ease, right? Fishing villages who are experience economic strain, people who in their own flesh and blood are feeling um, a sense of brokenness because they are um, discounted in the society or don't have access uh, to the fabric of social care that's available to so many. Um, economic disease, physical disease, spiritual disease for people who don't have access uh, even to the religious sensitivities of the time. Um, there's just a lot going on in empire as Jesus understood it. And as he experiences um, all of this um, uh, struggle to kind of find a pathway for humanity in that context, he begins to engage people in um, such deep and intimate connected ways that he finds in that deep connection what he ends up terming, uh, giving a, a language for as that we should be living together as one, um, as one body. And, and the language he brought to that was, um, we're all in God's kingdom together. Or the language I like to use is God's kingdom. This interconnectivity between us all means that we all have accountability for one another. And his capacity to cross over borders, his capacity to engage the disenfranchised was a way to somehow, somehow hold the whole human body as one. And I think there's some deep truth to that. It's this um, paradigm of the human condition and its capacity for interconnection one to another that he brings with him to Jerusalem. And Jerusalem, of course, is the center of, um, or at least the closest center. Uh, as you know, in Paul's journey, he does the same pattern, but he takes it to Rome. Uh, Jesus has access to Jerusalem. So he goes to Jerusalem, which is the hub of really economic power, political power, military power, clearly, because he will lose his life there in Jerusalem uh, as a consequence of his behaviors. And, um, and all the power is there, right? So he brings this new paradigm of the human family into the heart of power. In a sense, we would think of this Palm Sunday experience as a protest march, as a way to acknowledge publicly and to stand in solidarity with a new vision that both Jesus and the movement that began to surround him had for what it meant to be human. That's what's going on on Palm Sunday. It is an attempt at embodying a counter narrative to a dominant narrative in an attempt to create a different kind of future, a new possibility for so many different people. And they were willing to um, give themselves and their bodies to this effort. It is a powerful story and it reminds us of what it means to somehow acknowledge that maybe there are other options for the human um, future together. And how do we give ourselves to that? As I was thinking about um, Palm Sunday and how to frame it for ourselves, I was taken back to, um, I think it was 2016, maybe 2017. And it was the Dakota Access Pipeline that was um, about ready to be uh, trenched into the ground uh, through territory that belonged to Native peoples. And if you'll remember uh, as well, the um, Native peoples from all over the United States and maybe even beyond uh, showed up at Standing Rock. And these were people who were concerned, deeply concerned, that even after um, decades of oppression as a people, 
Now they were facing the possibility that a large pipeline carrying, I think, tar sands from Canada would move underneath um, their sacred land, would move underneath um, the source of water for their community, uh, would jeopardize uh, their lives in powerful ways if an accident were to ever happen. And so they could feel in their body not only the historic um, abuse that they had been taken by people like me, right, my ancestors. They, they had had years and years of abuse, and now they're facing more and more turmoil on the land that supports them. And so they, they move their bodies into a confrontation with power and said, not, not under this land will you lay these pipelines. The reason I remember that story is because I remember thinking about that whole situation as well and wondering why it always remained kind of an abstract conflict for me. For me, it hadn't sunk into my own flesh and blood, the, the, the nature of the dis-ease that that community was experiencing. Rather, I was in an abstract um, uh, paradigm about we shouldn't be building infrastructure that is grounded in a, um, a resource that we know we need to move away from, like oil. Why are we spending so much money and so much time and so much energy and continuing to build infrastructure for that kind of a, um, a model of how we support society when we need to be moving into new models? And so I was in my head. I was totally in my head around that one. And yet I talked to other clergy people who said, oh, no, I'm going and I'm standing with the people at Standing Rock. I will put my body on the line. And they moved their physical bodies to Standing Rock and experienced what the native peoples were experiencing there. And it was horrifying. I don't know if you remember on the news, right? There was um, uh, attack dogs that were keeping them at bay. There were water cannons used in the middle of winter to hose these people down. Numerous strip searches and, um, and pepper spray and injuries and violence and noise cannons, you name it. These people who long for a different kind of future place their bodies in between the dis-ease that they were kind of um, identifying and experiencing and some sort of hopeful new frontier that they would rather enter into. They could feel it in their bones because it was on their land. My sense is that that's the spirit of Palm Sunday. Jesus and the people who followed him somehow were able to get in touch with what needed to change inside their bodies. And when you can feel it in your bones, I think there's some sort of a, um, like unspoken motivation or drive or access or determination that can uh, rise up and help you to move into an engagement with that situation in a, in a much more, in a deeper way. My sense is, that one of the learnings from the coronavirus is that we're getting a small taste of that collectively, right? Our bodies are affected by this. We can somehow get in touch with the disease that is kind of physiological, that messes with the way in which um, uh, we feel every day. And so my invitation is uh, to Allow your own flesh and blood to kind of awaken in this moment. To just simply be in touch with it enough so that you can uh, feel some, almost like a calling of your own existential self to um, move into, uh, what would be a good way, like um, the imagination of another way of being that might provide some relief, uh, some openness, uh, some tenderness, some joy, uh, some possibility that you might embrace as we begin to turn this corner. That we don't simply focus in on this as we've got to fix this thing and put everything back the way it was, but rather we have to let it sink into us just deep enough so that we might be willing to venture into new territory together. And even for some of us uh, to take it into the halls of power, to ask for levels of transformation that might create a new future. That 
that could be what's being asked of us at this time, not just individually, but globally, right? How do we do this collectively with an entire planet who's experiencing exactly the same thing? So that's what I want you to pay attention to um, this Palm Sunday, uh, particularly as Jesus gives his body to the cause, is how do you um, kind of allow yourself space for religious experiences that awaken you to your own reaction, your own physical reaction to this, and um, to the collective body that we share. So to do that today, I'm going to invite you into um, a little experiment that's a little different than uh, last week. Uh, this is our, uh, because it's Palm Sunday and next Sunday we're going to celebrate Easter together, this is kind of um, a, a moment just to pause and to do um, an experience together uh, that I hope will kind of guide you into a physical uh, physical and sensation of what I'm talking about. And so today it's going to be a, um, a twofold process. One, I'm going to, I'm going to talk you through it quickly and then just invite you into the, into the experience. Um, first will be a kind of a letting go. So what I'm going to ask you to do is to stand and, um, I want you to kind of hold your hands. I don't know if the camera will follow me, but hold your hands in a way like, um, like you had a casserole and you were on the way to the potluck and you just dropped it. You know, that horrible feeling. So you've got something of weight and substance that you've carefully tended to, and it slipped through your fingers. And that's, that's going to be round one, is sort of this experience of what are some of the things that we know we're, we're kind of losing in this time? And to feel them uh, slip away from us for maybe but a time, but it, it could be something that we lose that is more permanent. Uh, so the first one is just to experience kind of the sense of loss. And I'm, on the first bell, that sense can be kind of surface stuff. You know, what do you kind of miss that you're not able to have access to anymore right now? And just reflect on that internally. And on the second bell, I would just invite you to go a little bit deeper and think about kind of the, the global condition we're in and what, what's being lost at that level right now. And once we're done with that, the second bell, then I'm going to invite you, rather than to share the piece today, to use the um, comment tab to maybe just share one or two things that um, came up for you in that meditative time. Um, some of the sense of loss that you've had, what slipped through your fingers, what slipped through our fingers, um, and to uh, allow us to read that so that we know what uh, collectively uh, we have lost together. Okay, so you can do it standing up uh, or you can do it sitting down, but um, probably the best position for this is the I just let a casserole slip through my fingers position. <laughs> Uh, which I came up with early on this morning. But I think it gives you that physical sensation of loss, right? Like, oh, oh my goodness, that just slipped through my hands. All right. So bell one, sort of the lighter stuff. Bell two, try to sink in a little deeper. And then I'll invite you to share that today with one another. Okay, are you ready? Take a deep breath. Uh, let your hands kind of um, drop. And uh, I invite you to experience what you are finding is slipping away from you in these times together. And then a little bit deeper to the global sense of loss.
now I invite you to just spend a moment and um, in the comment section, and maybe just share uh, one or two things that came up for you so that uh, the folks who are together today and who will share this uh, throughout the week and look at some of the comments, have a sense of what is, um, what is it that, we're, that we feel like we've uh, lost in this moment? Uh, and so if you're brave enough to share that, uh, that would be awesome. Uh, as you're working on that, uh, my two were um, that's just that sense of freedom that I had to um, kind of be responsible for my every day in a way that felt right to me. And now I, I have to check myself. I feel like I'm kind of imprisoned at some level to where the the confines of my cage are restrictive enough. I'm, I feel tense about that. That's one simple loss that I have. And then the grander one is just the um, kind of the loss of human connection that's happening when people are losing loved ones and, um, and losing, you know, e their economic viability and they don't have this ability to sit down over dinner and just kind of share, God, this hurts. Uh, and, and that, I don't like that. <laughs> uh, so those are the two for me today. Uh, think about yours and um, take a moment to share them, will you? Mm, those are some good ones. I'm reading them as they're coming across, and I know I'm a little bit ahead of you because <laughs> it takes time for this to get to your house. Um, this is uh, deeply powerful stuff. And as you kind of read what other people are commenting and uh, hold on to what matters most to you around this, I, I think that's sort of your access point to feeling um, this experience in your body a little bit more and to acknowledge the, the spiritual capacity that happens when you sense this deep inside of you, right, in the ground of your own being. That, it's just really, I think, um, a helpful uh, pathway towards how we collectively uh, grow through this experience that we're having as a planet. Uh, and uh, my, my hope is that this capacity for um, embodying this crisis will be a tool that the planet can use, our children can use, as we navigate other issues that we have yet to face together. Uh, issues around um, how we construct economies that work more equitably around the planet. How do we uh, deal with the environmental crisis that we have caused? Um, and how can we begin to reverse that and begin to take into consideration uh, the global um, kind of the planetary body as we move forward. All of that, I think, will be possible if we can be more in touch with that. Okay? So uh, hopefully that was a helpful experience. Um, and, um, and I know all the comments that we both read and reflect on uh, can be a guiding way forward as well. So let me just um, bring this to a close. Let me see how I'm doing with time today. Oh, much better. <laughs> much better. I, you know, I have, I have notes all over here that I'm trying not to engage in too much. Um, so some of it I'm going to hold off on till Easter. But um, uh, I, I do think that the, um, this experience of just paying attention like this for 30 minutes on a Sunday is um, it, it's so deeply needed for all of us right now. So oh, I'm, I'm always bustling with gratitude that we're able to do this together. So thank you for that. I want to close by um, reading not a piece of poetry today, um, but rather it's a note from a farmer. And for some of us here at Our Saviors and um, in the community, and we don't go to grocery stores very often to get our food. Um, we've actually gotten into a financial relationship with an actual farmer. And so we commit to um, buying shares in the farm. 
And then the farmer brings the produce once a week that is growing on that farm. And so we're in it for whatever happens throughout the season. So our financial commitment is not to the grocery store, but it's actually to the farmer. And however the farmer wants to use that money to generate enough protein and nourishment for those who are part of the farm. That's sort of how suburban people do farming these days. Every month, every week, we get a note from the farmer. And, and this one I caught me off guard a little bit. The one farmer who brings food here I know has had a really hard year and has seen a lot of crop loss, uh, a lot of trees and orchards that have not um, matured as they would like. Uh, and so a lot of revenue loss, uh, challenges of getting loans, uh, and then facing this whole uh, coronavirus, all of the distribution capacity that they had to restaurants, um, some of their wholesale markets all shut down. And so their economic capacity to respond to a very difficult year uh, was totally compromised by what we're all experiencing together. And I could imagine this farmer, I could imagine that um, it happens to be a man, that he is just um, going nuts, right? He's just like panicking beyond all level of panic because now he doesn't have the tools needed to react to what's going on in the farm this year. Much like what we just discussed with uh, tribal peoples and the um, exposure to a pipeline that might be going underneath their land. Just like the people in Jesus' time who are struggling and, and don't have this any tools in which to respond except to stand in protest or to stand in solidarity with each other. So we get the note from the farmer and I'm expecting a note uh, talking about all the troubles that they're having on the farm. And here's what was written. And as you listen to this, uh, let it kind of be a message to you as well. Each day as I uh, drive through the fields and orchards, my thoughts turn to the land that gives me a constant message of hope, a message of stability. Its voice is subtle, but it is audible. And it whispers, I've got you. I've got you. It's vast and intimate, distant yet embracing. It pulls you in a great timeless beauty that connects your spirit with the ages. This land sustains us. This land nourishes our family with an amazing diversity of good food. So in gratitude and appreciation, we will continue to work the land. Isn't that beautiful? From a farmer whose spirituality maybe is grounded in soil, finding even in the midst of times of deep dis-ease his, in his little world, right, still finding promise and hope in, in the earth that says, I've got you. I don't know about you, but I'm, I'm going to use that this week as my centering piece uh, to feel my body connected to earth and know that earth still has this mysterious capacity to hold all of us. My sense is that letter could have been written at Standing Rock. That letter could have been written as Jesus entered Jerusalem each from the perspective that out from their own ground of being, there is some sense of hope. How can they both enter into that with their full selves to be guided by it, to be inspired by it, not to seek some fix or solution, but to have their eyes open wide to a, a, a greater sense of the human family, a greater sense of where you fit in to this gift of life. That's what we're asking for on Palm Sunday. And we're asking it of you. And I'm asking it of myself. Hopefully this time together has given you a little moment of pause. And so I send you, as I've been sending you now for the past couple of weeks, 
uh, with this great benediction that Aaron spoke 4,000 years ago. Because as you get in touch and as you continue to move into new territory, uh, go with this blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and forever give you peace each step of the journey. Amen. Okay, thanks for this week. A couple of announcements here as I look at my notes. Um, let's see. Oh, yes. Um, next week is Easter Sunday, uh, but before then is Good Friday. And traditionally in this congregation, uh, we've had a Good Friday service that uh, meditates for a bit on the uh, actual physical cross, uh, the fabric that covered uh, the body, and then um, the stones that were used pr prominently as a reference to the stone that was rolled in front of the tomb. And I'm willing to set all that up and figure out a way to do it um, remotely like this, just to give you a chance to kind of pause and remember a Good Friday. So if you're interested in that, uh, let me know somehow in the comments or email me this week. And if there's enough interest, because it is a little bit of work, <laughs> not that, I, you know, you are, you are paying me to work, but I will come here and set it all up, set up the camera so it captures the cross, invite you to get a stone and to use that to interact with the experience of Good Friday. So I'll do it if I get enough people who say, yeah, 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 do it. It's all right. That's Good Friday. Easter, um, we're bringing Martin and um, another musical guest together. We've attempted to stream music. It doesn't work great, but we're going to give it a try. I don't know. We're struggling with it. So if there's somebody who knows how to help us with that, that's great. But, you know, with the distancing thing, it's kind of hard to make it happen. But we're going we're gonna to try to bring you music uh, for Easter Sunday, then uh, just a brief reflection on my part, and then I have a, a little piece for kids um, about the mystery of the Easter egg because we've got all these eggs ready and we're going to share the idea of egg with you kids. So music, uh, something wild about resurrection and then um, Easter egg moment uh, next week. And then uh, one more, uh, the support hub is going. Uh, as you know, Martin Morley is coordinating the support hub, which is great. And he is uh, encouraging us to think about not just helping out people who are in trouble, but just in order to kind of break the barrier of isolation, to just stay connected with a quick phone call to people in your local community. So it doesn't have to be like we're um, in a crisis mode to connect with one another. Because we don't see each other each week, wouldn't it be great just to have the phone ring and someone say, hey, how you doing? <laughs> you know, this, is, this is your neighbor. Uh, so feel free to uh, respond to whatever Martin puts out on his uh, Thursday uh, notice around, please, uh, around um, this week at OSLC uh, to be connected to that. And then lastly, thanks to everybody for their comments and advice about how this is going. Um, one thing I changed that you might have noticed is my shirt. I'm a huge fan of wild shirts, um, and I only get them through uh, Eaton and Gustin, just in case you want to find good shirts. Uh, but man, that shirt last week was just bouncing off the charts. So <laughs> I had to wear a, wore a solid shirt this morning, very bland, but um, it's the best we could do given the circumstances. All right, all. Um, stay healthy, uh, wear your mask. Now that's the thing. So um, let's see if we can't uh, keep flattening this curve. As uh, the good doctor says, right, this is not about just paying attention to the statistics about what we think uh, the trajectory is of this virus. It's really about our relationship with the virus. The virus will determine uh, when we might be able to find each other physically again in a collective embrace. Uh, here at church and in the restaurants and at the movie theaters and on the sporting fields and on and on and on. We are a people that uh, live in community and we long to be back in community together. So let's all take this seriously and, um, and help the planet find its way through this. And then let's see if we can't be a little different on the other side. All right. Namaste. Blessings. God's peace to you. Uh, have a beautiful week.